it's clear we all know what needs to happen, but it, and it's time for strong commitments to action immediately. From Sharmar Chek, Egypt, VOA's Heather Murdoch, thank you for your input. Thank you. The Accra Initiative of seven West African countries is meeting in the Ghanaian capital Thursday to discuss ways of preventing the spillover of terrorism from the Sahel region. Islamist militants have gradually spread their activities from Niger to Burkina Faso and Mali to West Africa's coastal states. Kent Mansa reports from the conference in Accra, Ghana. Over the years, West Africa has dealt with chronic instability caused by political crisis and cross-border terrorism. Five West African countries, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana and Togo, established the Accra Initiative in 2017 in order to collaborate against violent extremism in the region. Mali and Niger were admitted as observers before becoming members in 2019. The program promotes information sharing, training of security and intelligence personnel, and cross-border military operations in an often volatile region. Speaking to VOA on the sidelines of the two-day conference in Accra Thursday, Ben Derry, the Executive Secretary of the Accra Initiative said, cooperation among countries is key in the fight against terrorism. We sustain that confidence through the efforts that we are making, closer collaboration between the member states of the Accra Initiative and some partners that are already working in the areas what we are trying to do. So far, the Accra Initiative has resulted in little tangible action. In 2018 and 2019, member countries conducted joint military operations on their borders, which resulted in the arrest of about 700 suspected terrorists and gang members, and the seizure of homemade weapons. Since then, the threat of jihadist groups has often grown. Ghana's Minister of State Security, Albert Kandapa, said, between July 1st and September 30th of this year alone, there were 264 recorded terrorist attacks in West Africa, resulting in 745 deaths. Kandapa called on member states and the international community to continue their dialogue to come up with a more proactive approach in fighting terrorism. The Sahel and in fact the entire West African region are going through a very difficult moment in his due to the ongoing rapid spread of terrorism and the violent extremism. And it is in recognition of the debilitating impact of the threat of terrorism and violent extremism on countries and the international community that terrorism-related issues have in recent times featured prominently in security discourse at national and also international levels. Participants in this week's meeting include officials from the European Union, ambassadors from the member states, traditional leaders and some regional military officials. The conference is expected to culminate in the summit of member countries, heads of state and government. Kent Mensah for VOA News, Accra, Ghana. In East African Communities Armed Force, led by Kenya, has vowed to protect the city of Goba in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo as M23 rebels advance towards the city. Kenya sent hundreds of troops to Goma this week to quell the violence after rebels clashed with the Congolese army. Mohamed Yasuf reports from VOA's Africa News Center in Nairobi, Kenya. The East African Regional Force Station in Goma says it will fight any attempt by rebel group M23 to take control of the city, which is home to one million people. The Kenyan commander of the force, Joe Nyaga, said the city will be safe. We are here to protect and defend the Goma International Airport, including the force headquarters as the rest of the processes continue. The commander said the regional force was an intervention force, not a peacekeeping one. M23 fighters are reported to have advanced to within 20 kilometers to Goma, the capital of North Kivu province, after the Congolese army abandoned their defensive positions. 
East African countries agreed in April to send troops to the DRC to help stabilize the country's eastern region, which has seen decades of conflict sparked by the presence of foreign rebel groups and fighting among local groups over control of the area's mines, which produce gold, diamonds, tin and other valuable resources. Belize, Kerege, an independent political and security researcher in eastern Congo, says M23 is mainly concerned about fighting foreign rebels who are terrorizing the local population. They won't come to Goma, he says. They are fighting in the parks and with the Rwandan rebel group FDLR and other militias used by the FDLR. He says they are there to protect their people and properties against those rebels. For now, they are not interested in coming to Goma. There is an ethnic component to the fighting in North Kivu. M23 is made up of Tutsis and has accused the Congo government of failing to protect their families against other rebel groups in the region led by Hutus. Great Lakes region security expert Dismas Nkunda says using force to manage the DRC conflict will create more instability. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that he says, I am hoping it does not boil down into a fierce confrontation between M23 and the East African peacekeeping force. He says that will derail the entire process of peace in Congo because if there is a confrontation between two formal armies, then I fear the ending of the conflict may not be quick as we would have thought. Experts say M23 is one of the country's most heavily armed groups and remains a real threat to the region's stability. The Kinshasa government believes Rwanda to be behind the resurgence of the rebel group in the east of the country, an accusation denied by Kigali. The regional force is also tasked with disarming rebel groups in the country, a move Nkunda sees as impractical, if not impossible. There are about 130. He says there are about 133 rebel groups in DRC. Some of them are allied to the government. Others are allied to individual companies that are exploiting the Democratic Republic of Congo minerals and other natural wealth and others belong to various countries. He says the ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces, which is Ugandan, is present and it runs a vast territory. So, Kunda says, for a force of 900 soldiers that Kenya has sent in, in the DRC, which has nine borders and stretches to the Atlantic Ocean, with various rebel groups operating in the country, it is not possible they will be able to disarm those rebel groups. This week, former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta visited the Eastern DRC. He called for increased humanitarian aid and warring parties to engage in peace talks to find a solution to the conflict that has killed hundreds of thousands and displaced millions. Mohamed Yusuf for VA News, Nairobi. You're listening to African News Tonight on The Voice of America. I'm Yehiyas Wuhib in Washington. Please note we have moved our programs from voanews.com to voaafrica.com. There you'll find all your favorite VOA radio and TV programs and a whole lot more. Find us on voaafrica.com. Health officials in Malawi are struggling to contain one of the worst cholera outbreaks in years. The outbreak has spread nationwide, killing more than 250 people and infecting more than 8,000. In response, authorities and aid groups have stepped up cholera vaccination and hygiene campaigns, as, Le- as Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre, Malawi. <laughs> Malawi and its authorities are struggling to keep a cholera outbreak that has spread to nearly all the country's 28 districts. Dora Mafurinwam is in charge of the Limbe Clinic in Blanta. The cholera situation as of currently, we are receiving a, a lot of cases every day. Yeah. So the numbers have spiked at the moment. We're getting about maybe four or three patients per day. The situation is more critical in areas where residents use water from untreated sources like rivers where bacteria can spread the diarrheal illness. 
Elida Pili is a resident of Blantyre's Chigumula Township. Hi, Mipopeyo, it is Boko Matu Anabazi Bangizo, Za Mipopeyo. She says we used to have tap water in my area, but all the taps were vandalized, and also it's very hard to access water from boreholes because most of them are not working. Health workers fear the increase in cases were overwhelmed clinics. Our camp, we've got about four beds in one room and the other four beds in the other room. And most of the times they're getting full well and it is a dry season when the cholera season has not started. So we should expect more cases and we might not have enough space for everyone when the rainy season starts. Malawi started vaccinating against cholera in May with support from the World Health Organization. But community health workers say the uptake has been slow because many people shun the vaccine. Tam Chinula is a senior health surveillance assistant at Ndilande Clinic in Blanta. They often ask why we are bringing so many vaccines. She says they fear the vaccine might cause infertility. They say the vaccine is meant for children without knowing that anyone can receive the vaccine depending on the gravity of the outbreak at hand. Malawi this month received nearly 3 million doses of cholera vaccine with support from the WHO, the Global Vaccine Alliance and the UNICEF Children Fund, UNICEF. In the meantime, health workers are educating communities on the need to get the vaccine and how to sanitize water supplies to make them safe for drinking. Lamik Masina for VOA News, Blanta, Malawi. African women entrepreneurs from 35 countries have called for more support from lenders and governments to help them benefit from the African free trade area. Meeting in Cameroon's capital for the UN-sponsored African Women Entrepreneur Forum, the women say their businesses are mostly small, informal, and suffer discrimination. Moki Edwin Kinzeka reports from Yaoundé, Cameroon. More than 200 women from 35 countries are meeting in Yaoundé for the second African Women Entrepreneurs Forum under the theme Female Entrepreneurs, Challenges and Opportunities. Billion people would boost women-run businesses and reduce poverty. Ben Samba Panza spoke Wednesday night at the forum. She said many women are missing out on the opportunities of trade integration because they are small businesses have low productivity and get Africa and Russia's war in Ukraine are affecting most female-owned businesses. Panza added that many female businesses in the CAR, Cameroon, Chad, Mali, Niger and Nigeria have been forced to close because of armed conflicts. Women entrepreneurs say they often face harassment and discrimination in Africa's male-dominated trade. Niger's director for the promotion of rural enterprises, Biso Nakatuma, led a 15-member delegation to the three-day Yaoundé Forum. She says women who want to export their farm produce and benefit from opportunities offered by the African Continental Free Trade Area are targeted by customs and police officers who want bribes. 
Nakatuma says women are forced to depend on their families and communities to fund their businesses because banks refuse to give loans to female investors. The forum demanded a stop to discriminatory practices against women entrepreneurs. It also called for more access to financing for women-led businesses, including export credits and guarantees. Ashir Basiliken is Cameroon's Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. He says Africa's economic ministers are committed to solving the challenges for women that were raised at the forum. I am convinced that uh, women entrepreneurs from various countries of Africa will uh, go back to their respective countries with a clearer vision, a clearer picture of what the continental FTA is about and how they can take advantage of this wonderful opportunity which happens to be the continental free trade area. Despite the challenges, the forum said female entrepreneurs this year contributed an estimated $350 million to Africa's economic growth, about 13% of the continent's gross domestic product or GDP. The UN says the female economy is the world's largest emerging market with the potential to add $12 trillion to global GDP by 2025. Moki Edwin Kinzuka for VOA News, Yaoundé, Cameroon. Thank you.